open up this holy service in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Church, shall we, as we give reverence to the Lord. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father God, we thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father God, for another blessed, beautiful service, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. We ask that you deliver us from all sin, Lord, Heavenly Father God. Oh, planting us a new seed, Lord God. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit, Lord, Heavenly Father God, as we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the mighty glory in Jesus Christ's mighty name, the church of living word up, it says, amen, amen. Give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout this morning, amen. Come on, we can be louder than that. Let's give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. What's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? It's to know it. It's to live it. 
church, you got to believe in your heart that no matter what circumstance you're in, no matter what your situation, no matter what what you're in right now this morning, that you're not alone, amen? He is with you. He is there to lead you through, amen? Deep waters, I know that you will be with me. When I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome. Through the battle. 
Hallelujah. Give it up for the worship team. They got some voices of the angels, don't they? Hallelujah. Praise God. We want to welcome you out, let you know Jesus loves you. We're so glad you're here. Look around you. This is a spiritual family in Christ. How many know we all fall short of the glory of God? I love that song. In Romans 8, 1, 8, the word of God said, For I consider these present sufferings are not worthy comparing with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Oh, there's glory to come, but it's all God's glory. Let's continue to give him praise. God bless you. Those watching, Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. If you're here for the second time, this is your church. If you're here for the first time, welcome to the church of Living Word Uplin. This is a church that's going to continue to grow. Let's continue to give reverence to the Lord. It says in the word of God, let every holy hand go up in this holy place, one without wrath and one without doubt, as we give reverence to the Lord. Oh, Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, God. Oh, this is the day that you have made, Lord, God. We shall rejoice and be glad in it, Lord, God. Jesus Christ, without that shedding of your blood on that cross, Lord, God, there wouldn't be forgiveness, Lord, God. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, God. Those that sin against us, Lord, God. Heal us, anoint us, Lord, Heavenly God. Let us get a fresh anointing today, Lord, Heavenly Father, God. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit, Lord, God. Bless our loved ones, Lord, Heavenly Father, God. Break every hindrance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, God. Deliver us from all evil and all temptation, Lord, God. Open our hearts so we can obtain the ministered message, Lord, God, from our pastor that you have given us, Lord, Heavenly Father, God. As we continue to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the mighty glory in Jesus Christ's mighty name, the church of living word up, it says, amen, amen. Give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five. Let him know Jesus loves you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we call up Freddie for the announcement. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, who's excited to be here in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Okay, just a little um, brief touch. If you were all here yesterday, uh, we had a, you know, a great thing happening out here in Upland. We gave back to the community and by raising hands, who loves turkey? Yeah. Amen. So, you know, we, we provide that same excitement, that joy, and that love Amen. for the, all those families, you know. So even if they they didn't um, believe in God before, you know, God provided for them a turkey, and they're going to remember that on Thanksgiving Day, you know. So it's all glory to God, you know, for putting in our pastor's heart. So thank you, everyone, for showing up. And it was an awesome time if you were there. Yeah. Amen. So now it's time to go over our announcements. And the first announcement is, if everyone could please put your phones on silent or vibrate, just don't turn them off, because you might need them. And another announcement, if you see the reserved parking space, please do not park there, or we'll put up an announcement up for you. And uh, we want to keep on inviting people out, invite your friends, and you know people out there that you meet to church, we want to pack this space out. Amen. Amen, let's get excited, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. And um, I believe, oh, we're also there's going to be fellowship in the back. I see some Krispy Kreme donuts. Uh, try not to try not to run each other down for, you know, there's, I, I see enough for everybody. So <laughs> there's going to be coffee also. Get to know one another, get to meet one another. You know, we're all a family here, a family of God. We're united in Christ, you know. And so... I believe that's all the announcements. <laughs> yeah. Time for the funnest part of the service. Where the tides and often call Amen. Brother Anthony. Amen. Good job, job Freddie. Amen. Amen. How many of us are feeling blessed today? Amen. I mean, we had a good turnout yesterday. Amen. Amen. Testing, testing. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, we're about to get back to the Lord. Before we do, we'd like to call our ushers up. Ushers. Amen. Amen. How many of us are tired from yesterday? Hey, it's a good tire, right? Now we bless so many families out there. Everyone should be jumping with joy. Amen. Amen. It's like, <laughs> amen, amen. All right. We have our three ways to give today, church. Like always, we have to our Zell app. Amen. And that number is 909-303-0291. That's the Holy Ghost right there. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, and we have through our second way, uh, we can write a check out to leave where to up in, excuse me, and through our tithing envelopes. Just to show our hands, if anybody needs a tithing envelope today? Amen. 
Amen. The word of God for today is right here off of Matthew chapter 6. Um, yeah, this scripture I got from yesterday was such a good turnout. Amen. Amen. It's right here from 28 to 34. It says right here. This is Jesus speaking, all right? This is Jesus laying down, laying down some wisdom. He says right here. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown to the fire, will, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek, tell your neighbor, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen? Amen. You know, church, this is a blessing. Not, the, the Lord, it's only by his grace that we have another day. Amen? Amen. And he gives us another opportunity to give to him. Amen? Amen? You know, it was our giving that set up that whole event. It was the Lord moving, you know. Amen. The word of God says he gives us the ability to earn our wealth. And we, he, he calls to be good stewards of what we have. Amen? Amen? And let me tell you, there were so many families that, that, that i seen their faces, right? Yeah, yeah. right? There were so many families that I, I, I knew they... they it, Man, they were just so happy, amen? amen. There was, how many turkeys did we give out, Pastor? Uh, 350 turkeys. 350 turkeys. And amen, I just want to say thank you for everyone that was out there, all our workers, uh, everyone that helped out. Women, thank you for building those bags, amen? And even the ones who smacked their head on the door and jammed their finger, thank you guys too, amen? But God is good. God is good. This is a good time to get to his house to build his kingdom. Amen? amen. To be fit for his kingdom. Amen? amen. Amen. God is good, church. And you know what? Those people are going to have a good Thanksgiving. Amen. amen. In Jesus' name. Amen? amen. Amen. Now, before we get back to the Lord, let's just show a little reverence right now. Pray over the tithes and offerings. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, my God, we thank you for another morning, another day, my God. My God, you know, we know that your grace is sufficient for our lives, my God. And we thank you, my Lord. We lift your name up in this holy place, my God. And everything, everything that we give to you today, my God, let it be blessed, my God. Let us give to you, my God, so willingly, so cheerfully, my God. For you made a way, my God, for all those people to have a beautiful Thanksgiving, my God. We thank you, my God, for using us as a willing vessel, my God. My God, I ask that your, your Holy Spirit just move in this church my, right now, my God. We ask that your word, my God, move, my God, in this house, my God, to convict, convict and direct us, my God, to be fit for your kingdom, Lord Jesus, my God. My God, we thank you, my God. We lift your holy name up in this holy place, my God. In Jesus, my name, our church says, amen, amen. 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 Uh, there it goes. Amen. Let's give it up for Jesus. Amen. How, how many are excited? We're going to go ahead and dismiss our ushers this morning. Amen. And we want to welcome everyone out to Living Word of Upland. If I can get a little bit more mic up, please. Amen. I want everybody to hear me this morning. Amen. But how many are uh, excited to be in the house of God this morning? It's a beautiful presence of the Lord in the house. But right now, before we get started, you know, we had a prayer request for Paul Medina. Amen. He, it's one of Jessica's uh, uncles. And, you know, we want to lift him up in prayer right now. I believe he's in the hospital. But how many of us know that God can do some miracles? Amen. 
And also, you know, for the prayer requests that we might have. But if we can all bow our heads as we lift up this prayer request unto the Lord and we can put our prayers there as well. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, today, Father God, for your presence, Father God, in this house, Lord. Right now, Father God, we say, Father God, when two or more are gathered, you're in the midst, Father God. We lift up Paul Medina to you, Father God. Right there, Father God, in the bed, Father God, where he's at, that you can make your healing power, Father God, to heal my brother, Father God. I pray, Father God, for... Every family that is here in this house, Father God, of any wiles of the enemy, Father God, that tries to shoot, Father God, that has no authority over our lives, Father God. We lift up, Father God, our children, Father God, our grandchildren, Father God, every single one, Father God, that we can just testify, Lord Jesus, and who you are, Father God. But through it all, Lord Jesus, always giving you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. And Jesus, then we say, Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. How many are ready to have church today? Amen. Well, today we're calling up Pastor Danny Soto from Living Word of Fresno. Amen. And, uh, you know, it's just so awesome. Amen. I, I invited him yesterday to the Thanksgiving event. But he knew that we were going to be, he had to labor, so he says, no, I had to do something else. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just playing. But here's Pastor Danny Soto as today gets ready to give you the thing. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap. Come on now. And we're going to. Well, then the, the children can be dismissed. Amen. You can go ahead and take your seats. Amen. Yesterday we had a, a celebration service for one of our pastors that went to, to be with the Lord. Amen. That's why I wasn't able to make the event. Amen. But we had a, a, a good, good time of celebration. Amen. For Pastor Rudy Tovar. Amen. But uh, also bring greetings from my pastor, Pastor Ruben Reyna. Amen. Uh, he loves what's taking place over here and what God is doing. Amen. And um, I'm just blessed to be here this morning on a Sunday morning. Amen, because we're normally out and stuff, but uh, I called your pastor, hey, I'm free on a Sunday. Amen, so go, okay, we're going to bring you in. I also have my wife with me, she's right there in the back, amen. In, in January, we'll be celebrating 42 years, right? 43 years, my bad. She gave me a nod, you know, like, yeah. amen, so I just thank God for that. But we're going to get right into the word, amen. If you're taking notes, I titled this, Thankful for His Faithfulness. Amen. Because, you know, we're getting close to Thanksgiving and, and you gave turkeys out yesterday. And, but sometimes also in the holidays, uh, we can go through changes, you know, because, oh, I, we want to do more. We want to provide more. And sometimes we forget about God's faithfulness because there's some in the room here. You can be on the mountaintop, but there's also some in the valley this morning. Amen. And, and sometimes we forget about his faithfulness because we look at our circumstances. We look at our situation. Amen. But this morning, I want to bring us back to look at his faithfulness. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them God is faithful. How many believe that? I'm going to Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 through 24. It says God's loyal love couldn't have run out his merciful love couldn't have dried up says they're created new every morning how great your faithfulness then it says i'm sticking with god i say it over and over he's all i've got that was the message translation now the nlt it says the faithful love of the lord never ends his mercies never cease Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. Let's pray. Father, we're careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. God, I thank you for your faithfulness, my God. Because even at times, we don't understand it. But God, I pray this morning, God, that we give your Holy Spirit full control, liberty to deal with us, to encourage us, to challenge us. Father, I pray I step aside and you use me, God, to preach your gospel, to teach your word this morning, God. We come against any distractions right now, God, and we give everything to you. We ask this in your son's precious name, and everyone said amen, amen and amen. 
when I read this, I was like, wow, this is, because sometimes we go through a lot of things. I mean, we have been went up to Fresno in April. We started pioneering. And then I, I, I ended up in the hospital in September. I had an infection in my leg. So they, they had to dig out the infection. So I had to hold my leg, and that shut us down. My pastor says, stay over here. Get your leg healed. He goes, because ministry will be there for you. He says, but your leg, if you don't take care of it, it won't. Amen. So, so I had to stay here. So I'm going through everything. I told my man, we went out. We got families in our church. And now we can't go up there. Now I'm in bed. And, and I was in bed rest. After I got out of the hospital, I had to keep my leg up. And I was like, man, God, what's going on? You know, the, he came. He hit the house. He hit the team. And I'm like, God, we're, we're, we're here all our. And I started focusing a little bit about what's going on. How many ever been there? Right, you're, you're serving the Lord. You're you're going forward. You're you're doing the best to your ability, and things just seem not to work out. Amen. Amen. And, and I was like, God, what's going on here, man? I, I went out there. We're faithful. We're doing all, and everything is shutting down. Amen. And then the scripture came to me, God, your faithfulness. And what God had to do is re rearrange my thinking. Because how I many you know? Sometimes He has to do that. Because coming to the holidays, you can start getting, man, the turkey was okay, but now I, I don't have the finances to get gifts for my kids, or I want to do this, I want to do that, and I'm limited. So, so this morning, I want to encourage you to let you know that God is faithful. Because sometimes we forget, forget about that. You woke up this morning. Thank God. Amen. You're here in church. Thank God. Amen. Because you could have been in prison. You, you could have been dead. Amen. You could have been separated from your family. Amen. But God's faithfulness has you here this morning. Amen. And, and so when we look at the story here, when Jeremiah was writing in the book of, of Lamentations, it was a terrible situation. Jerusalem had, had fallen to Babylon, and it was a grief. The nation was mourning. And, and, but sandwiched in, in this whole book, he talks about God's faithfulness. They were there. They were captured. They forgot about his faithfulness. And the reason they were there is because you know how that goes. They were going forward. They were serving the Lord. They get away from the Lord. The Lord, it's okay. You want to do your own thing? You're going to have consequences to that. And, and in the consequences, they started going through things. And then they started saying, man, forget it. It's done. I'm done. God's not in the picture no more. And then uh, Jeremiah, he writes here, but God is always faithful. Amen. And so that's encouraging for us because many can find yourselves in hard situations that seem hopeless. You can be here this year and could have lost a loved one. And you're like, God, I don't understand that, God. God, I don't know what's going on. Amen. But, but the promise still rings true. God's mercies are new every morning. So the book here deals with suffering more specifically the suffering of God's people. Because sometimes we think, well, I got saved. I gave everything to the Lord. Man, man, that's it. I ain't got to go through nothing. How many ever thought about that when you got saved? I'm going to give my life to the Lord. And, and then when we get saved, we're in the baby stage. You know how when you get babies are born, you're cuddling them. You're, you're hugging them and everything. And that's what the Lord does to us. We're in baby stage. But how many know after the baby, a little older, start, I let him cry. That's okay. It's good for his lungs, right? And, and then you start letting them grow up. That's the same thing the Lord does with us. And we get saved and we're happy. God, I'll do anything for you. And, and then when we start doing our own thing and we face the consequences, and then we're like, God, you're not here no more. I'm here to let you know God is still faithful. Amen. We may run astray. We may do our own things. But God has a way through his mercy and his grace of bringing us back to where he needs us to be. And so sometimes we forget about that. God, but you don't know me. I'm struggling with this. Oh, God, but you don't know. I don't want to do that. I want to do what I want to do still. But God is still faithful. Amen. God says, I chose you when nobody else wanted you. I chose you before you were born. I, I was thinking about you. Amen. Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. Amen. So that means that when we came into this earth, we were in his thoughts. Think about that. Sometimes we think, why am I here? Man, uh, uh, I, I, I was a mistake my parents told me. 
I mean, no, we weren't a mistake. God knew exactly what he was doing. Look at your neighbor. Tell him you weren't a mistake. Because how many know all our lives we made mistakes and sometimes we think we're a mistake, but we're not. We're perfectly where God wants us to be. Amen. And it's all because of the love of God. If you don't know that this morning, I want to let you know God loves you. I mean, God loves he loved you so much. He went to where you were at to reach you. Think about that. Somewhere in the crack house. Hello, somebody. And God went there to get you where you're at. Some, uh, he was working overtime, right? Because we were running. I don't want nothing to do with God, right? And I'm good, right? You know how we are in the world. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with me. You know, and, and man, your whole life is messed up, but the pride don't, doesn't let you say, God, here I am. And, and God says, that's okay. My grace and mercy is going to move you to where I need you to be, amen, for you could surrender to me. So it wasn't your probation officer that put you in the home, amen. It wasn't all these pro. It was the Lord Jesus Christ himself where he says, I got a purpose for your life, amen. So be thankful for where you're at. You were thankful when you first got into the home. Hello, somebody. But now you're like, man, I'm ready to leave. Why? Because you know how to brush your teeth? You ain't ready to leave. Stay where you're at until you get blessed out, amen. You come to the church, and I love the church, man. God, I love what it's doing. And then when they start asking for commitment, oh, leave me alone. I'm going to go find another church. Right? I mean, in sports, your team is losing and you're still loyal to them. Your church is winning and you don't want to be loyal to your church. Hello, somebody. Because the Lord's great love, we're not consumed. How many of us made bad choices and we thought it was over? Some of us need to pick up our feet too, man. It's like, man. And don't go look at your spouse. That's not what I'm talking about, bad choices, man. You know, I made a bad choice. No, 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 no. <laughs> right? Some of you are like, man, you know. <laughs> In the middle of tragedy and suffering, amen, sometimes we can think that God doesn't love us. God, I made so many mistakes. How can you love me? See, sometimes we don't understand the depth of his love. Because we, we look at our lives. I'm going to know when we look at ourselves, we're, we're all messed up. That's reality. I mean, I, I be, me and my wife, we've been serving the Lord like going go on 40, 41 years, you know, uh, 42 years. And, and, and I mean, at times it still blows my mind. I mean, I, I still think, God, how can you use me the way you use me? I was just a knucklehead. I had no education, right? I didn't even know how to spoke right. You know, when I got saved, PCP, super cool's acid, I was fried. You know, I, I would stutter a lot. You can ask my wife. I, 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 when they, so when they, but I always said yes to the things of God. Amen. That's why I'm here. Amen. I would mess up. I'd go to church. And when I first started going to church, I would go in high. And, and, and some of the leaders said, what do you come to church for? You're always high. So I would get extra high to sit by them just to show them I'm still here, you know. Uh, but, but by me going like that, a seed was planted. So if you're here this morning and, and whatever you did last night, but you're here. Hello, somebody. Good thing we don't have the fluorescent lights, right? We see that stamp in your hand, man. You know, uh, uh, but God's grace and God's mercy is why we're here. But his grace and mercy is not a license to sin. Think about that. Because sometimes we say, oh, he's, he can't for, he'll forgive me. Let me just go take one more drink. He'll forgive me. I don't, I, I don't smoke weed no more, but I just go around it and get contact high, you know. <laughs> and then you justify, well, it's legal. Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's beneficial for you. Amen. We're believers. How many can say amen? amen? Something has to separate us from the world. Amen. Our talk has to be different. Our walk has to be different. Our action has to be different. 
Our gratitude has to be different because you can be going through the worst thing in your life. But when you understand who God is, you're going to have a joy on the inside. Amen. Everything can be falling apart around you, but you got a smile and the world can't understand it. Why do you look happy? You may not be happy because of the circumstance, but you got a peace that surpasses all understanding because you know that God is still in control. His steadfast love. One translation says it's a steadfast love. That steadfast means firmly fixed. It means immovable. I don't care what you do. He's still going to love you the same. But our mind, our love, is with the way we were brought up is different. We were loved when we did good. And sometimes when we get saved, we think the same thing. God, I got to be perfect for you to love me. No, we don't. The Bible says he loved us when we were at our worst. Our worst. When nobody else wanted us. Not even your parents. Because you messed up so much. When you go to the house and you hear the doors lock and the windows shut and the footsteps. And you're ringing their doorbell. Nobody comes. They were just tired. Because every time we said we were going to do okay, we messed up. And then we started stealing from the house. So that's why they locked us out. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I wasn't the only one that was there. Hello, somebody. So it's important for us to keep this in the forefront of our mind. So when he wrote here in Lamentations, they were going through it. They thought God forgot about them. How many know sometimes we can get there? God, you forgot about me. Why am I going through this? And then you hear everybody else's testimony. They're getting blessed. And when you forget about his mercy and his grace, you start, oh, now they think they're all that. You know, and then we start getting an attitude because other people are getting blessed. How many know we got to celebrate when other people get blessed? You may be in the valley, but it doesn't matter because God is building us all individually and separately. Your mountaintop will come as long as you remember that his love does not run out. So that's my first point. His love never runs out. It never fails. It never ends. You can make the worst mistake ever. And his love is still there for you. See, we can't understand that. Because all the love from the world is when we made a mistake, that's it. Right? When we made a mistake and you weren't saved, your wife threw you out of the house. Right? You, and that's why the guys came with the phrase, oh, I'm in the doghouse. Right? <laughs> that's what they meant. And so we're conditioned to that kind of love. So when we get saved, we're like, God, you can't use me because I got all this junk. Right? Don't look at me like that. I know who I'm talking to. I'm still amazed that God uses me. Amen? Because I'm like, God, I still got a lot of stuff inside. Attitudes. My mind still runs. God, I pray. God, I read. But my mind, sometimes it gets out of hand and it goes crazy. Some of you look at what? <laughs> I'm just being real. As long as we're in this flesh. We're going to battle with the spirit because the flesh wants nothing to do with the spirit. The flesh will always take you to your circumstance. The spirit will always take you to his promise. Remember that. And so if you're going through something here, if you understand that his love never runs out, you're always going to focus on the promise. If you're in the flesh, you're always going to be saying, why is this always happening to me? It's almost like that old song, Charlie Brown. Why is everybody always picking on me? Some of you older people know what I'm talking about. Amen. So here, this builds off the first part of the scripture, God's compassion, his mercy. His mercy is a byproduct of his love. Remember that. Because his love is steadfast and, and knows no end, neither his, his compassion. Romans 5.10 says, if when we were at our worst. How many remember when we were at our worst? Sometimes we forget that. Pain has no memory. What do you mean? It means when you go through the hard times, when you feel like throwing the towel in, you forgot about the pain that you were in when God saved you. It says, so when we were at our worst, we were put on friendly terms with God. And this says why? By the sacrificial death of his son. It says, now that we're at our best, 
Just think of how our lives will expand and deepen by means of his resurrection life. So here in Romans, he say, man, when we were at our worst, and then he says, we were put on friendly terms by God, by him sending his son. That's why it says, for God so loved the world uh, uh, that he gave his only son. He gave a son for us, for you, for me. Because he loved us, amen. But it says now, but then when I read it, I said, now that we're at our best, and I'm like, what do you mean our best? We're still struggling. But how many know when the Lord looks at us, he sees our best. You may be at your worst right now, but when God looks at you, he sees you at your best. And he knows what your best is because he created you. You may say, no, God, but I'm messing. It doesn't matter. His grace and his mercy says, I see you at your best. So pick your head up this morning. Be thankful that uh, you may have drugged yourself in, feeling discouraged, feeling messed up, amen. But God sees you at your best, amen. He knows what he created you for. He knows where you can be at. That's why he requires more from you. I know what I created you for. It's like the creators when you, they make a car. They know how fast it can go. They know everything on it. And, 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 but if you buy a car and just leave it in the garage, I got a nice car, but you never use it. And some of us are like that with the Lord. God says, I put a call in your life. A great call. I see you at your best, but you don't believe what I called you to do. I'm going to know some people are battling with the call of God right now. You know God chose you. You know God called you. But you don't want it. I don't want to do that. When I got saved, I just got saved because uh, I wanted to get off dope. That was it. Nothing else. I don't want to preach the gospel. Heck, I just wanted to go to church, feel good, look at my kids and like, man, all right. You know, I'm, I'm doing okay for myself, you know. I was 21 years old and I already had three kids. I was, I was 19 when I got married. My wife was 18. You know, and we got married young. We got saved after that a year later because we were going to get a divorce. Right. I mean, you know, I, we got married three months after we met cruising on Weeder Boulevard in East L.A. Choo! <laughs> she picked up on me. That's the truth. I was posted up there, you know, in the neighborhood, just standing there in the corner. She came by with a girl's a car. A girls. Hey, you got a phone number? You know, and it was over, you know. <laughs> Uh, three months later, we got married, you know. She's seen her prize, and she went for it. <laughs> and so it says that, that his love never fails. But if you take that word fail, that, uh, and uh, it, sometimes that, that word, if you look it up in the dictionary, it means it's complete. It means it's finished. It means uh, uh, there's no more to come. So sometimes we think that fail. Oh, God, I failed. So, no, no. But before you read that word, it says never fails so what does that mean his love will never give up his love will never be finished for you his love will never come to an end no matter what you do and sometimes that frustrates us i remember when i first got saved i uh, god's got more for you no he doesn't i'm coming to church i'm doing good i'm paying my tithes leave me alone that's what I wanted. You're called. God's got to. No, I'm not. I can't even read. I can't even. I don't understand nothing. You know, hey, you want to start a Bible study? Yes. Started a Bible study. You know, and I would write real big on a paper. Some of you have heard this before. Whatever you do, don't cuss. I just said yes. In the world, I said yes to everything. Dope. It didn't matter what it was. I didn't say, hey, is, is that USDA approved? I didn't do none of that stuff, you know. Yes, give it to me. Hey, leave that rest alone. You weren't supposed to. I mean, you know, I went all the way. So when I got saved, in my mindset, I'm never going to say no. I'm always going to say yes. So I said yes to everything. Hey, you want to work in the children's? Yes. You know, hated it. I'm just being honest, you know. It's like. With the little kids crying and everything. Your mama ain't going to come back, I used to tell them, you know. <laughs> then, when, then when their mom would pick them up, see him, he said, yeah. I said, it wasn't me. We all look alike. You're talking about somebody else, you know. And, 
But God was teaching me everywhere I went because I kept saying yes. Kept saying yes. It's so simple. Just say yes to the Lord. Be thankful that he saved you and just say yes. When your pastor says, hey, I I need volunteers, just say yes. When your pastor says, hey, can you come and help? Just say yes. When your pastor says, hey, we're going to pick up finances. We need to meet a need. Just say yes. That's why I'm here today. I just said yes. When we first pioneered, I was 27 years old. And then when Pastor Ruben says, hey, Soda, I'm going to send you out to pioneer. I said, I said, yes. 61 years old, and I said, yes. Let's go pioneer again. You know why? Because I, I started saying yes. I'm not going to stop saying yes. Whatever you want me to do, God, I am going to do. Why? Because I remember when I was at my worst. I remember when nobody wanted me. I remember when our family was broken up and I would cry. God, I just want my family back. God, I just want to see, remember, and get back in church and just feel your presence, God. God, I need you. And so that's why I'm here and I'm grateful. You know, when you stop being grateful, you, you lose your thankfulness. And then when you lose your thankfulness, you, you, you start thinking that God needs to give you things. I mean, no, he doesn't need to do anything. He doesn't. He did enough by sending his son. His son did enough by dying for us. Amen. So some of us say, man, I'll, I'll die for the Lord and this and that. You, you can't even serve him. Remember God's love. Amen. His love never runs out. Now, the second thing it says, not only his love, it says his mercies are new every morning. And, and the message says his merciful love couldn't have dried up. They, they're created new every morning. The NLT says his mercies begin afresh each morning. So that means every time we make up, wake up. God's mercies are new. We have may have blew it yesterday, but today when you woke up, guess what? You got a fresh start. A fresh start. God says, whatever you did yesterday, my grace and mercy covers that. Today, you got a fresh start. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you got a fresh start this morning. Amen. Sometimes we forget about that. Sometimes we remember everything that happened in the past. And then when we wake up, the enemy's there is telling you, hey, remember what you did yesterday? All you got to do is look at the devil and says, you know what, devil? Today, I got a fresh start by his grace, by his mercy. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday i just thank god for his faithfulness see this is another way of showing us that god's mercy will never run out regardless of how often you rely on god's compassion there will always be more for tomorrow his mercy and grace again it's not a get out of jail free card you know monopoly you get the get out of jail free card that we can abuse It's not a license to sin however we want. Amen. That would be missing the point. Oh, God, your grace and mercy, because the devil will tell you, that's all right, go ahead and do it. And then just repent. God will forgive you. I mean, no, that's a lie from the enemy. When he died and rose again on the third day, he destroyed the powers of Satan. And the Bible says that when we got saved, he gave us everything he has. And then the Holy Spirit lives in us. And then he says, greater things will you do. How many of us are doing greater things? Or do we limit God by the way we think? God, you can't use me like that. I'm still struggling. We're always going to struggle here on this earth, amen. But we always got to keep saying yes, amen. So it's not an opportunity uh, to sin. Rather, it's an opportunity to return to God even after we mess up. Remember, that's an opportunity to return to God even after we mess up. We don't need to worry about God's mercy running dry. His mercies are new every morning. That should encourage you here this morning. Amen. You should be excited. What do you mean? That everything I do. Yes. You got a fresh start this morning. Amen. Some of you just like, thank God. I made a mistake yesterday. I got in an argument and I cussed somebody out. Some of you say, it wasn't yesterday, it was today. No. (laughs) 
You got a fresh start. See, some of us need to remember that. Because the devil don't want you to remember the fresh start. He wants you to remember the mistakes. He wants you to remember where we came from. Not where God is taking us to. No, you can't do that. How are you going to preach the word? How are you going to volunteer? You're still struggling. You know how you get out of that struggle? You volunteer. Remember that. Oh, no, no. When I, when I get it all together, then I'll volunteer. How many know we're never going to get it together here on this earth? Some of you, that's revelation. Like, really? Yeah, as long as we're in this flesh, we're going to struggle. The battle's always going to be there. It's not like, I'll get it together. No. Whenever, whenever the opportunity, just say yes. Oh, but you don't know where I'm at. You don't know what I'm carrying. You don't know what I'm struggling with. Yeah, but when you volunteer, when you surrender to the Lord, you're giving them permission to work with the mess that you have going on. When you don't volunteer and you just sit in the church, you still struggle with it. And and then you say, oh, I'm not going to tell nobody what I'm going through or what I'm struggling with. That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to isolate yourself because it's easier to pick you off. You're by yourself now. And then you come to church, they ask you, how I'm doing? How are you doing? I'm doing great. And then you go home. They don't even care about me. I'm struggling, and, and they don't even care. You just told them you were doing great. <laughs> right? Then you get all mad. You get all twisted. I'm going to go look for another church. Yeah, but when you get there, guess who else is there? You. <laughs> With everything you got. Let's go on to the third point. Third point is faithfulness is great. Then the message says, how great your faithfulness is. Then he says, I'm sticking with it. He says, I say it over and over. And then when I read this in the message, why is he saying it over and over? I mean, sometimes we've got to talk to ourselves. God, I, I may be going through the worst, God, but I, I got to say it again. You are faithful, amen? You are faithful, God. Everything may be falling apart, God, but I got to say it over and over. You are faithful, God. Your mercy and your grace never runs out, amen? Sometimes that's all you got to say. God, you are faithful, God. I don't understand my circumstance, God, but God, your grace and your mercy, God, I got to say it to myself again, God. Your faithfulness is great. When I lost my grandson, I had to say it over and over, God. You're faithful, God. I don't understand what's going on, God. I don't know why you took him, God. I don't understand, God. You should have took me instead. But God, your faithfulness is great. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Your mercies are new every morning. So the last part here ties the whole passage together. We receive mercy and compassion, not because we are faithful, but check this out, but because God is faithful. We got what we got because he is faithful. Some of us don't deserve to be here right now. Everybody looks at us. Oh, you think God is going to use you now? Remember where you came from. God's not using us because we're faithful. He's using us because God is faithful. He's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his promises. Amen. And God is faithful to do what he said he's going to do. The Bible says this. he's not like man that should lie. He's faithful to his word. And in, it's his faithfulness to his promise that allows us to receive his mercies. Remember that. He doesn't give us what we want because we're faithful. It's because he's faithful. Some of us, I know many times I threw the towel in. God, I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to preach nothing. God picked it back up and threw it back at me. He says, listen, I gave everything for you because I believe in you. I ain't quitting on you, so you ain't quitting on me, amen. And sometimes we have to remember that it's his faithfulness. When you're going through the struggle in your marriage and you feel like giving up, remember it's his faithfulness. When you're praying for your children and they're getting worse, remember it's his faithfulness, amen? Because sometimes it's like, man, God, I, I'm praying for my kids and they're getting worse, God. This stuff doesn't work. Yes, it does. Not because we're faithful, but because he's faithful. When's the last time you thank God for your children? 
Oh, but they're not doing good. It doesn't matter. Thank God in advance because his promises are true and he, that he's faithful to do what he says. Just keep praying for them. And I mean really praying for them. Sometimes we want other people to pray for our situations instead of us praying for them. Oh, go ahead and pray for me. Pray for me. What about you travailing for your kids? One, two in the morning, really praying for them, coming against the devil. Devil, take your hands off my kids. I know they're getting worse, but God, your word is faithful. Your promises are true, God. Every time they take a drink, God, make it be awful to them. Everywhere they go, God, if they're in a club, wherever they're at, let the backslider witness to them, God. Whatever they do, God, your word says you are faithful. When's the last time you prayed like that? When's the last time you prayed like that for your marriage? I mean, you fight more with each other than fighting the devil to let your marriage work. I mean, just fight, you know. Man, fight. Man, how come you put the toilet paper that way? <laughs> come from the top. It's got to come from the bottom. And it's a fight. Toothpaste. Why you squeeze it here? You got to squeeze it here. And you fight. <laughs> then when you get older and more, man, you're just glad you got toilet paper. You're just glad you, you got toothpaste, man. God, I'm just glad. I don't care how they put it. Just leave it standing there, sitting up. I don't care. But in the beginning, you're fighting for everything. Me and my wife used to fight all the time. I used to make oatmeal, and I used to like that, that, that condensed milk in the castle where my mom made it. She wouldn't make it like that. We would fight. You know, then, make it like my mom. Then I had to realize she's she not my mom. You know, and okay, make it however you make it. And I just it tastes good. You know, I mean, know what I'm talking about. I mean, I know this ain't a marriage seminar, but I, I just I, I sometimes we get in there and we forget about God's mercies, especially wise when God starts using your husband, and the pastor starts saying he's got a call in his life. And if you forget about his grace and mercy, you say, oh, but you don't know the way he is at home. How many know God knows how he is at home? And God says, I still believe in him. So if God says, I believe in him, how come you have an issue with it? And you heard me say it before, what issue means. Look in the mirror when you get home and say it real slow. It's you. You know? You know? Because I've seen that working with couples. The husband gets fired. You pray for him to get saved. And then when he gets saved, you don't want him to be sold out. And then when your pastor asks him to do something, oh, no, it's, it's family time. We need family time. So if you're calling up your pastor and telling him you need family time, put your pants on, man. Take a stand and say, I'm going to do what I have to do, amen. I got to be sold out because if I'm not sold out, God created men to be sold out. If you're not sold out, you're always going to struggle. I would go all the time out, sure. My wife, I'd leave the house mad. My wife be mad at me. And don't come back. Slam the door, lock it and everything. But I was building my foundation. I was sold out in the world. I'm going to be sold out in church. Don't come back. I'm not going to cook for you. They better feed you. Yeah. So I would come home. I look at it. Okay, she'd be asleep about this time. Let me go. What was I doing? I was setting the foundation. Now, nowadays, men don't want to be men. Oh, I, I got to go spend my time with my wife. Well, spend it when you don't have church. You know? And, and, and let me give you some free 99. When, when, when I got saved, I didn't like to tithe because that was my money. Who knows what I'm talking about? And I was making good money when I got saved, you know. And, and, and I'm like, I'm going to tithe. All they want my money. Man, they don't, yeah, man. So when, when I, I would know they would, they, we would have a thing called Miracle Sunday where you would give 99% of your income, you know. And, and at first I'm like, these people are crazy. So I would tell them, well, I'm not going to go to church today. But check out my reason. She goes, no, we got to go to church. No, no, let's go. I'm going to take you shopping, babe. <laughs> okay, let's go. You know, my thing is I'm not going to tithe. Let me get out of here. Let me take her, buy her stuff. But then when I learned the principle of giving, man, God took me to a whole nother level. Amen. Because sometimes you go, what are they doing with the money? It's not your, it's not your business. 
It's not your business. Well, what if they're using it wrong? Do you know God's promises are not hinged on what they do with the money? His promises are hinged on our obedience. When we're obedient to his word, and his word says give, and when we give, it doesn't matter what happens after that. You're being obedient to his promise, so God's going to be obedient to his word. And he's going to provide over and above what you're going through. Some of you aren't even tithing, and you wonder why you're struggling financially. Oh, well, you were doing so good. Why do you got to talk about money? <laughs> the church can't function without it. You can go to a restaurant. You spend all kind of money. You don't care. But when you come to church, right? How many ladies, how many ever get those coupons? 20% off. 10% off. Right? Then you, you're happy. My wife loves that. I'm trying to block her emails. That way she don't go, you know. She'll get a coupon. Oh, I got to go. I get temper. Yeah, but look at how much money you're spending after that. You get excited. 10%. Let me go. Right? And then when they do it, they add it up. Did you use my coupon? Right? Yeah. Well, that's only a, a little bit off. But then when you come to church and you hear 10%, how much? That's a lot of money. You're not running to give your tithes 10%, right, the way you are with the coupon. If you would run to give your tithes the way you do with that coupon, you would be blessed over and above, amen. You would be flowing with God's blessings on your life because the windows of heaven would be opened up. Okay, enough for that plug on giving. But his mercies, how do we receive God's mercies every day? Number one, by faith. I mean, no, you need faith. To receive it. What do you mean faith? It means you just got to believe his promises. That's faith. It's simple. Just believe it. How many know the gospel is simple? How many know we complicate the gospel? No, God, you can't do that. Because I know where I'm at. <coughs> By faith. Hebrews 11.1. 1, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. See, faith is our response to his great steadfast love that he has shown us. And, and faith isn't just about what we believe in our heads. Faith is also how we choose to live our lives. If you got faith in the Lord, you're going to believe his word. That's faith. You're going to believe his word. God, you gave me a promise. You're going to believe his word. That's faith. Uh, uh, faith requires action. Right? How many, how many people say, Lord, I love you? In church, amen, God. Praise the Lord. Then you go out and you have no faith. Right? Still got that modelo in your refrigerator, you know? Some of you say, don't go there, don't go there. Okay, let's, let's go on. I know you're new, but it's okay. Yeah. See, our faith should have a direct impact on what we do and how we do it. Faith requires action when we receive God's mercies by placing our faith in him. Action. If you want to be blessed financially, you have to plant the right seed. What do you mean the right seed? Money. Let's be straight. Money. Because, I mean, how many ever planted a flower and you got your, oh, I'm going to go ahead and plant this kind of seed. Or you plant a lemon seed and then lemons come out. How many ever planted a lemon seed and then you got avocados? How I many? It doesn't happen like that. So if you want a financial breakthrough, guess what kind of seed you have to plant? Finances. Money. You can pray all you want. I got faith, God. Bless me, God. Oh, God, I need a breakthrough. And he's okay. But when are you going to plant that financial seed? See, some of you are getting mad at me now. Why are you talking about money, man? I don't know. This is where the Holy Spirit is leading me. You know? You got to plant that seed. You did for your connection. You planted more than that seed. You gave them half of your house. <laughs> and you didn't have a problem with it. When you were in the world, you, you gave your whole check there at the bar. Oh, I don't care. I know I'm going to be in the doghouse, but I don't care, man. But now you come to church. What? Give money? No way, man. Then you're always going to struggle financially then. By faith. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, by faith. 
Second one is by prayer. This is how you get his mercies, his grace, by prayer. God's mercies are true in the good seasons and the bad seasons. How many could say amen? amen? And what we need is we need to be reminded of this, especially on our difficult days, that God's mercies are true, even when we're going through our hardest times. How we go about that is through prayer. Prayer isn't about getting something from God, but it's rather connecting with God. It's connect. What happens when we connect with God? We start thinking like him. How many of you know, we can tell who your friends are because you, you guys that talk a lot, you start talking like them. Right? You heard the thing, birds of a feather flock together, you know. And the same thing with God. I mean, how are you going to believe his promises if you don't know him? How are you going to believe it? How many ever worked at a job and, and, and when you got your check, you're like, I don't know if this money is good. No, you believed in your boss that the money was good. I worked at one job here in Upland, and the boss would give me my check first and go to the bank because there's not enough money. Years will pass. Everybody else won't. You know, I, I was like, thank you, Jesus. That's favor, man. I don't care. <laughs> but how many know with God, it's not like that. In prayer, you're connecting with him. So when you connect with him, you get his mindset. God, I'm here. I'm hurting. But I'm going to give you my hurt, and I'm going to take your peace, God. God, I'm confused, God. God, I'm discouraged, God. But God, I, I feel defeated, God. But here, I'm going to connect with you, and I'm going to walk in your victory, God. God, I don't understand. I, I, I'm confused, God. But your word says, God, that, 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 that you give us a sound mind. A sound mind. What does a sound mind mean? It means you believe his promises when you're going through the worst part of your life. Prayer is important. Why? Because when we pray, we can be strengthened. I remember went into prayer and you came out. You're like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready now, man. You went in like a wimp. You know, God, I'm ready to give up. God, I can't take this no more. But then inside, spending time with God, all of a sudden, when you're talking to him, he's reminding you about the promises. He's reminding you about your past victories. He's reminding you how he defeated the devil. Amen. So you come out of prayer and your strength and devil, come on, devil. I got you now. You're under my feet. I don't care what you're telling me. You've been lying to me because when I was talking with God, he reminded me that you're the father of all lies so whatever lies you're hearing from the devil he's the father of all lies they're just lies so that means the opposite you're never going to get your breakthrough he's lying to you that means you're going to get your breakthrough you're never going to get a financial but he's lying to you that means you're getting ready to get your breakthrough you're never going to get your healing he's lying to you get ready for your healing amen my kids are never going to get saved he's lying to you get ready for them to come into the house of god why because you're spending time in prayer you're there with god and he's strengthening you and he's encouraging you and he's reminding you that god's mercy are new for us every morning that's what prayer does. When's the last time you went in prayer with God? God, and you know his promises. I mean, you, know, you can know somebody, but then you can know somebody. Right? Well, I know you got somebody who's known me. Yeah, that's Pastor Danny. And you just know me by that, but you don't really know me. And sometimes we're like that with the Lord. Oh, that's Jesus. That's my Lord. But you really don't know him until you get into prayer with him, until you connect with him. Amen. Until you're there and, oh, that's my BFF. Amen. That, that's it. It's me and God all the ways, right? The third thing is by being still. How many of we got to be still in this world that there's all kind of noise and distractions, amen, that are fighting for our attention, that wants the flesh to give it over? How many, I mean, I'm sure all of us, have, we want to pray when we get up, but how many actually do it? You get distracted. You get up and the first thing you do is go to your phone to see how many likes you got on your last pass, post. That post was a year ago, man, and that's all the likes you're going to get, so give it up, you know. Be still. Be still. And how many know it's hard to hear his voice when you're not being still? It's hard to hear his voice. You look at the disciples when they were in the boat facing the storms. They didn't even recognize Jesus. It says when they was coming to him, they, they, they thought it was a ghost. It said they were cried out in fear. But what did Peter say? Lord, say the word. 
and I'll do it. What was he saying? God, I, I don't recognize you because it's difficult. I'm going through the hardest time. I'm going through something I've never been through. But God, I know your voice. And some of us, when you need to be still because when you're still, that's where you begin to hear his voice. Amen. Psalms 46, 10 says, be still and know and recognize and understand that I am God. I mean, know being still is more challenging than ever in our culture. But it's also the most important thing that we need to be still in his presence. And then the next one, by remembering his faithfulness. This is how we understand his mercy and his grace. You've got to remember his faithfulness. Remember last time you, 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 you felt like giving up, that you didn't think you were going to make it, that you thought it was the end of the world? But you're here still. Why? Because his faithfulness. you got to remember his faithfulness. The time you made a mistake and you thought it was over and you, you, ah, that's it, I'm done. No, he still loved you. So to get his grace and his mercy, remember his faithfulness. And my last one, and I'm going to close with this, by focusing on his faithfulness. When's the last time you focus on that? God, everything may be going wrong right now for you, but you need to focus on his faithfulness. God, you've been faithful to me all these years, even all these mistakes I made, God. When's the last time you focus on all the good things instead of the bad things? Too many times we focus on the bad things. What about focusing on God's faithfulness? Because God is faithful. You cannot receive God's mercies if you're not looking for God's mercies. You got to focus on his mercies. You got to focus on his grace. Amen. When we're constantly moving and distracted by all the things in this world, we'll never notice God's mercy. So keep your eyes on God and the storms and distractions around you, not on the storms and distractions around you. Amen. As everyone stands. Amen. I'm going to know God is faithful. <clears throat> let, me, let, me, let me close with this. How many know the story of, uh, of Jacob? And how many know that Jacob was a conniver? That word conniver means trying to make things work out the way you want it. And we know the whole story of Jacob. Remember, he, he, his brother Esau, he, he gave him his birthright. He was working blessings his whole life. You can be here and everything you do, you're trying to work a blessing. What do you mean work a blessing? You know, they got a good heart and they're always helping people, so you go tell them a sad story. That's work a blessing. And, and, and so he got, he stole his birthright, and then... Later on, Jacob steals his father's blessings from Esau. Remember, his wife put him on. He covered him. And after that, his brother was mad and was going to kill him. So Jacob's on the run. Jacob forgot about God's faithfulness. And he tried to always do things his way. And his way never worked out. But in Genesis 32, it says that on the same night, he took everything and he went to Jabbok, and he took them there. He sent them across. And then verse 24 says, And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. It says, And when the man saw what he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And Jacob's thigh was put out of the joint, and he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you declare a blessing upon me. The man asked, What is your name? And this is what the, the way the scripture said. And in shock of realization, whispered, he said, Jacob, surplanner, schemer, trickster, swindler. In verse 20, and he says, your name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For you have contended and have power with God and with men. And, and so here, Jacob is by himself. And it goes back to God's mercies and grace. Sometimes we just got to get along with God. Everything Jacob had, he pushed it aside. Because his brother was after him. He was in a bad situation. And his brother was going to meet him. He thought his brother was going to kill him. And so now he's crying out to God. Sometimes we need to put ourselves there. Just along with God. Along with God. You know, and, and, and sometimes God has to eliminate distractions around us to get our attention. But sometimes we have to eliminate the distractions. 
Because God's not going to do everything for us. Maybe for some of you, you've got to turn that TV off to get a relationship with him. Maybe with some of you, you have to uh, do more nice things in your marriage to make it work instead of having all that pride. But where I want to get at here, it says the man asked him, what is your name? And it says, and in shock of realization, he whispered. He said, Jacob, Sir Planner, Schemer, Trickster, Swindler. And, and when I read this, this why, did, why did it say he whispered? The first time in Jacob's life, he was being real with God. And he was ashamed. What's your name? He says, you know what? I'm a schemer. I'm a conniver. You know what? I'm all messed up. You know what? I've been doing everything on my own strength and not allowing God to, to get in here. And it says Jacob confessed. I mean, Jacob came clean. And it says he in shock, he was saying, I've been a deceiver my whole life. How many know you got to be honest with yourself uh, before you're honest with God? I'm, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of trying to be someone else. Once he did that, then verse 28 said, your name will no longer be Jacob. Now you'll be called Israel. You know what Israel means? God prevails. God wins. For some of you who's here, that's what you got to do today. You've been running from the call of God because of the way you were brought up. Nothing, nothing wrong with it. I ran from the call of God when I first got saved until I met with God by myself. Put all distractions away. God, I'm tired of running, God. Every time I do something, I get ahead, but then I get backwards again. And then I come to the same place where there's still a void inside my heart, God. And that void is because it's for the Holy Spirit to take control of your life. And then it says here that he changed his name. He touched his hip. And, and, and God was saying, you know what? No more deceiving. No more running. No more manipulation. No more doing it your way. No more doubting me. Amen. And, and, and so the rest of the life, Jacob walked with a limp. You know what that told me? Every time he took a step, he remembered, God, your mercies and your grace are new every morning. Every time he took another step, he remembered, I can't do it on my own. I need God's power. I wonder how many are here this morning. And God is dealing with you right now. That's why your heart's pounding. You're not nervous. That's the Holy Spirit coming in and say, see, I brought him here today to tell you that my mercies and grace are new every morning. I know what you struggle with, but I need you to give me everything. Maybe you're here and you don't know the Lord. Amen. You need him in your life. Because without him, we can't do what God created us to do. And if we can't do what we're created to do, we're going to be miserable. That's why you're in church and sometimes you're miserable because you, you haven't planted yourself. You haven't volunteered. You're, you're still running. If you don't know the Lord here and you're here and you say, you know what? I, I want to say a prayer with you. I, I just want to give this opportunity. If you don't know the Lord, amen, as every head is bowed, every eye is closed. If that, that's you, just raise your hand if you don't know the Lord. I want to say a simple prayer for you. I don't want you to leave. I don't know who's here, who's not here. You know the Lord, you backslid. Anyone here before we move on? You say, you know what? I just want to receive them in my heart. Amen. Now let's go on. Maybe you're here and you say, you know what? I just forgot how to be thankful because I forgot about his mercy and his grace. I forgot about his faithfulness. If that's you, just lift up your hand. We want to say a word of prayer with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Now, now's the time to do something different. God says, I, I, I need you. You and me. I need you to come to that place. What I want to do next, I want you to come to the front. We, we, we want to pray with you. And, and, and this is the Holy Spirit moving right now. There's some more of you that need to be up here. God wants to break you right now. Just come up. Don't listen to the flesh no more. Say, Holy Spirit, today I'm going to do what you want me to do. When you're here, just lift up your hands. Just say, God, I'm thankful for where I'm at. Say, I forgot about your faithfulness. I forgot about your grace. I forgot about your mercy. Say, God, I give it everything I have to you. 
Just talk to him in your own words right now. And if you want to be included in this prayer, just come up. Some of these are still battling right now. You know, God wants you. Those that are here, some are running from the call. Just say, God, I, I, I give everything to you, God. I don't have to be perfect, God. I just have to be available. Tell them in your own words. Some of you feel like crying. It's okay. Go ahead and cry. That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is telling you, son. God is telling you, daughter, I love you. My grace and my mercy is for you. I know where you've done. I, I know where you've been on. But I still believe on you. I still want you. I still called you. I still chose you. My grace and my mercy is new every morning. Hallelujah. We're going to go around and we're going to pray for you. But talk to him in your own words. Some of you are fighting right now a situation that is hopeless. And God says, all you got to do is remember my faithfulness. That's it. So lift your hands up. Do something you never done and you'll get something you never got. Holy Spirit, we give you liberty right now to do what you need to do. Holy Spirit, we ask you to take full control. We're going to go around and we're going to pray for you. Hallelujah.